Okay. All right. I'm here with Leo Marcellus of Wageningen University. Is that is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay. How gaat het met u? Heel goed. It's going very well. Oh well, good, good, good. And and uh, I think was it Tuesday or Monday you gave a talk on let it let it be. Could you yes. tell me a little bit about what that research was and and what sort of the conclusions were of your work? Okay, let it be is a research program what we just started, and there will be in total there will be uh, eight PhD students, three postdocs, most of them recently started and what we want to do is we want to s save 50 percent of energy in greenhouse horticulture and by doing 50 percent we think we need to reduce the energy use for lighting by 60 percent and of course we want to save energy but we do not want to compromise production or the quality so that should be at least at the minimum at the same uh, at the same level and what we do we're looking on smart ways of lighting um, of course the first step is replacing high-pressure sodium lamps by LEDs because high-pressure sodium lamps still is the standard. Mm -hmm. With LEDs, we get many new opportunities. The first is that they are more efficient in converting electricity to light. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the first step and that all the manufacturers will do. Then comes in our research and we want to uh, make more use of every micromole of light. And we think that that can be 30% more efficient. And that's what we do in our research. And this 30% we think can be realized by a better absorption of the light. And that's about 15% of the effect. And that is better absorption that all the light is absorbed and that it is absorbed at the right place in the plant. Subsequently, we think also that photosynthesis can be better by using the right spectrum, the right location of the light, uh, but also the right timing. Timing is also very important. If the plant is working not that efficiently, then we should not light if it is working efficient, then we should use more light. Mm -hmm. So then we have had first 15% by a better absorption, 10% by a better photosynthesis, and then the next step is a 5% increase, what we expect by a better partitioning of assimilates between leaves, stems, fruits, and the roots. So in particular, in tomato, we think that we can get relatively more fruits at the expense of the leaves. Well, and that all together, integrating it, the better plant response, the better light, uh, we think we can realize that overall you get 50% saving of energy without any loss in production or quality. And in fact, we hope that the quality can also be improved. Okay. Well, as far as, uh, I guess, the greenhouse uh, environment compared between um, the Netherlands and, uh, let's say, the U.S., mm -hmm. um, I'm from the Midwest. We've got cold, cold temperatures. Most of our heating costs, well, most of our costs are from energy costs are from heating is not compared to lighting. Could you maybe give us a, a, an overview of, of what the differences are between the Netherlands and, and okay. say the US? So, so I, I do not know the situation for the Midwest, so I do know the situation for the Netherlands. If you're growing a, a tomato crop, we grow in year round one crop. Um, if you use a lot of light, uh, then 80% of all the energy is for electricity for the lamps. The remaining 20%, that's for controlling humidity uh, sorry, I should say, for controlling temperature. Yeah, also humidity, but the main part is then the, the temperature control. So that's only 20%. Yeah. So, so your, your, your winters are, are probably a lot milder than... I guess so, yes. Okay. But, of, but don't forget that also that you get heat from the lamps, and that mm -hmm. adds also gives some heating. But, yeah, we only need 20% additional okay. heating. Leo, you're a wonderful person, and, and you're a great researcher, and you're really doing uh, great strides forward in our, our industry, and we really appreciate you having talked to us today. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Leo. Yeah, okay.